Welcome to the January February meeting. Uh, today is February 8th. This is obviously, uh, well not obviously, but this is the January February combined meeting. So um, we've got all park board members here. So hello everyone. And uh, first order of business, I'd like to make a motion to approve, approve the uh, November December minutes, which was the last meeting that we had. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, that's great. Thank you. And thanks for doing those, Anita. Um, ongoing business, Zach, do you want to speak to uh, the stops? It's pretty yeah, quick. Can do that. I can do this. Yeah, this will be this will be quick. So, um, and this kind of ties in probably to the budget discussion at the end. So, I'll, I'll I'll leave the money out of this until we get to that point in the budget. So, the only thing left at twenty one remains the um, the fencing that goes on top of the wall, and the uh, water fountain, and the, uh, if we're going to put a, um, we said we're going to put a picnic table up. So, that, those are the last really things to to go into twenty one, and then that stop is complete. Um, Looks like everything's going okay there. I walked by there quite a bit. I did see some snow tracks where contract. I think I think they're contractors that are from the house that's to the west of the stop. They're they're, they're pulling into the parking pad from time to time. They're not they're not staying there because I do follow up. But um, it, when the snow's deep, you can't tell where the boardwalk is in that in that area. And so they were really close to running over the corner of that boardwalk. They'd have to fix it if they if they admitted doing it. But um, they may want to put some poles up next year when the snow comes, <clears throat> just to show where that boardwalk is in the winter time. So that's basically done. Uh, Twenty three, um, same situation is we just have to put a, a fencing on the on the top of the wall. We'll do that at the same time as twenty one. Uh, Twenty one is completely paid for. Twenty three has not been paid for. Uh, 24 is complete, has been paid for. So everything else um, that we were on the hook for with, with um, Woodruff from last year, everything is completed except for 23, as far as I just let somebody else in, uh, except for stop 23. And so we got to work through that. I've not seen the bill breakdown yet on that stop from town versus uh, Parks Board. And the town ended up covering quite a bit of 21. So uh, they, they may end up covering quite a bit of 23. So we'll see how that goes. So I think that's about it. Um, as far as what we said, Wait, we're going to you just for, I'm sorry, Zach, I yeah. missed that. What did you say the town paid for quite a bit of what? I'm sorry. Uh, let's let's talk about that when we hit the budget. Oh, okay. We've got that in the in new business. All talk right. about the 20, yeah, because all that that'll it'll end up covering all the all the financials. So um the only other things I guess to talk about, we can wait till later on if we want to, but you know, we said that the priorities for this year was maybe 28. Uh, that that stop it definitely has gone a couple of years. It needs to get overhauled. So I think that that ought to be probably our top priority um, for this year. If you guys don't disagree, and um, possibly getting twenty nine back up and functioning. Um, that all depends on how we get from the bottom of the stairs down to the beach, and there's some uh, legalities going on with that. But uh, other than that, I mean, we don't have any big projects lined up aside from twenty eight. 29 for the, for the balance of the year. So hopefully we get those two done. Yep, great, okay. Yeah, I agree. I think we've, you know, had tried to do 28 before and erosion took our took our focus away. So that'd be great to get get yeah. that get that fixed for, for those folks. Everybody. We already have a plan. I mean, we had a plan that was pretty much agreed upon by all of us and, and the people that live around the stop were also involved with that. So we'll probably just have to uh, key that get that back up in the agenda, put some Facebook notices out there and say, hey, we're, it's been, a, it's been over a year, it's been over two years since we talked about it. So here's, again, what we were going to do, we'll show the same pictures and the same you know, artwork that I did to kind of show what we're going to do and move forward with that. we got to find a contractor um, and, and we, I'd, I'd like to, you know, Woodruff has done a great job, but I would like to uh, see about some of these other contractors that said they were interested um, that previously declined a bit put that out there one more time because it's a new year and see if we can get any other contractors interested in doing a job like that. Yeah, I agree. Okay, great. Um, number two, stop decorations. That's just, I think, um, a reiteration of kind of park board policy uh, to remove any stop decorations at our discretion if they're, um, you know, it, it, it doing some doing harm to the stops. As we know, we've had some that have been nailed 
to the wood, uh, not safely, obviously, for anyone to use nails or um, tape to the signs and pulling pulling paint off and um, making it rust and stuff like that. So that's just a re kind of a reiteration of um, the policy that we've adopted with that. Uh, yes, uh, can we just, just real quick hit that a little bit? Yeah. So what we're saying then is, and I'm only, we're only doing this because we, you know, we, we, we've got a resident that likes to decorate a particular stop and, you know, we want to be consistent, but um, the other stops that have had any kind of decoration, I, I was talking about 16, 18, at 16 in particular, um, nothing has been, the stop was not modified, wasn't nailed, there was no tape involved, there was nothing that's going to end up getting blown away. The kind of decorations that we've been moving from stop 21 repeatedly have been um, plastic, lightweight, <clears throat> fairly low cost, very low cost type of decorations that may or may not remain where they're, where they're put. And they're also, they've been historically nailed to the, to the wood of stops. Um, they've been taped to our stop sign holes where you remove the tape and, and the, the paint comes off with it. Uh, so those things have been removed and we're going to continue to do that. I just wanted to get that on the record, Nita, that it's been discussed. Um, it is our discretion. You know, we've, we've been put on this board to handle town property and the stops and the parks. And, and uh, if we feel like the decorations could, could, cause, could cause harm to the stop or cause a danger by nails coming off holes or what have you, um, this, this person also decided to write on one of our brand new uh, split rail fences. And so um, it's just going to continue to get removed. So I, I think, I think that, that policy is fine. We just leave it to our discretion. Yeah, agreed. Thank you. Um, Jeff, any comments? Um, unless anyone has anything else to add on that subject, I'll turn it over to you, Janice, if you've got an update for the wonderful Garden Club. Just a quick update. I talked with Joy today about some budget and reimbursement dollars, and uh, I screwed up, but Joy will go through that in the budget, I think. Um, they, I turned them in on time, I thought, but they were considered late. So had some shift in dollars. The um, other thing is we had our annual meeting. Thank you, Anita, for mentioning that. I'll catch up on my Beecher, and we're starting off the year in April with our first um, meeting and we thank you again for the dollars and we'll continue to work hard and I'm getting traction on getting help for stock 24. Awesome. Thank you. Well, thanks again. Thank you. With that Janice, the, the balance from right now that you guys have in your fund is $2,590 and 28 cents. And we'll have every bit of fun spending that. Thank you. Oh, good. Um, is is Sarah on, Zach? Yes. Yeah. Okay. I couldn't tell. Go. How are you, Sarah? Thanks for joining. Do you have an update for us? Yeah. So we officially started bingo last month. We're two weeks in. Um, the first week had great attendance. The second week, not so ideal. We're going to continue to advertise. Um, the last one, though, also fell on the Tuesday that that big storm came through and so I had a lot of people message me personally saying we were going to come but we're kind of afraid of the storm kind of a deal. Um, we have been doing our first Saturday art classes and they are a huge success. The last three have sold out. Our one for March is already half sold and I just posted it yesterday morning, made it available. I am looking forward to hopefully the, the town council eventually um, adjust some of the COVID things because I think we could have quite a few more individuals coming. We always have a waiting list going for people wanting to attend. It's been it's been great. Um, tai Chi is still on hold until March. She continues to email those in our community specifically that had attended or are interested and she simply is not getting a response from them at all, not even I'm not interested and I appreciate her kind of holding off for right now because if she were to continue classes, we would be getting charged. So it's actually saving us some money while we're waiting, hopefully until warmer months and um, more daylight. The turn up fitness class on Saturday mornings is going strong. It's going really well. Um, Stacy has been great. They're all um, 
they're well attended. The social distancing has been wonderful. It's just been, it's been a really neat thing to see um, going forward. Um, my, I am starting the process of um, meeting with my directors for summer camp. I meet with them first and then we um, work on staffing once we have the directors in place. I did have some questions about their pay and I don't really know who to ask about that information because I know there was a whole um, thing last year with the Human Resources Committee that there's certain things that we can and cannot do. And I just, I don't know who to talk to going into the season of um, hiring people because I, I want to be sure that I'm following whatever the expectation is. So I don't know if that's a possibility in the next um, few weeks or so to meet with either one of you or whoever would be the person for me to, to kind of pick their brain so that we're sure we're following, um, following protocol. Joy, what, what, who was your suggestion that she, um, the new gentleman on the HR committee? Is there a new gentleman on the HR committee? I don't know. I thought there was after that one guy stepped down. Yeah, I don't think they've named anyone on the HR committee yet. So HR right now is Bill, Mary Lou, and Chief Swistek. Okay. So do I reach out to one of them first or should I pester one of you first with what my questions are to, or you can let me know better. Uh, like, what are your questions? Like you want to give them a raise or what? Well, I honestly, I had asked previously up until last year, last summer, um, you guys had given me my budget and it was up to me to hire within the parameters of what I what money I had been allocated for um, the the fees for staff. And right. um, to the best of my knowledge, we'd always been inside of that. I'd always submitted paperwork. I never changed anybody's hourly pay like midsummer or anything like that. And um, last year I had a couple of directors that based on like how I track my things were due for a raise. And I was told that I, I could not do that. And so if I, like, I, I have a director that I've not heard back from. And so if we need to replace her, I don't even know what to say would be an hourly rate because they never got back to me. The HR committee never got back to me about whether or not the raise for my current directors that I'd asked for was approved. Um, so I, I just, I'm not totally sure. It, I don't know why this should have to go through HR in that, in that fashion, because you guys are not included when the town gives everyone else raises. This is all funded by the park board. So the way you were, in my opinion, the way you were doing it was, you know, you, you've got $20,000 to divvy up for your wages for your summer park program. And it's the same this year. And if there's some reason you can't do that, then I'll, uh, I'll talk to Bill in the next week before he's gone and find out what the exact deal is. Okay. There's, also, there's also a public meeting you can go to and ask the questions there, but I, you know, if you don't have to get them involved and you don't need to go to that meeting, I guess. So. You mean about the HR meeting? Yeah. Okay. I would not bring that up at the council meeting. No, not no. the council meeting, the HR meeting. They have an oh, HR okay. meeting. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. Um, can I just shoot Joy? Can I just shoot you an email with just kind of my my few questions and like the numbers that I knew before that all started? Just just so sure. Me, you get okay. Um, and then my only other question, which it looks like you guys are going to talk about this in new business, was um, my budget for camp, but then also for activities going into um, twenty twenty two. Okay, we'll get that, that under budget, but while we're still with you, I'd like to talk about room 13. Okay. Um, we all looked at your paint samples, and we all picked the same one, and I think it was your least favorite. That's fine. Uh, we, we all picked, I literally picked colors that I liked, so you picked a color that I liked. So that's, I mean, it's a win. <laughs> okay, we picked D, which was the lightest one. Love it. Now, uh, 
Doug actually, we tried to get a couple of bids for dealing with the room. Uh, Ray Post didn't get back to us. Michiana Construction did get back to us. And they gave us a quote, and this, this is what it will include in the room. Uh, patching and painting the walls and the closets, along with providing uh, the required electrical work. They're going to remove all that electrical around the, on the floor. Uh, and the unused phone and PA system. And they've included the removal of two th through wall heating systems and patching the wall. That means they patch it on the outside and the inside, which is a pretty, really big project, actually. So for painting, redoing the closet, uh, taking off those closet doors and removing uh, and doing all the electrical work and removing those two big units, we got a cost of $7,150. Um, I think it's a good bid if you ask me because removing those things are really, is really an extensive project. They had to remove four of them in the, in the gym and Doug and those guys did it by themselves, but it took a long time and they're not willing to do it anymore. <clears throat> so it's uh, this is not a room we rent, but it's a room that Sarah uses a lot. And, uh, uh, you know, does the park board want to uh, invest in this upgrade? Yeah, I mean, I think we open for discussion for sure, but um, what, um, and I don't know if it really matters, but what, um, is it just otherwise used, hardly not at all, or is there another group that also? A lot of people use it. It's used for Irish dancing. It's used, which is used extensively in the summer by Sarah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, a lot of other people rent that room when they want to do you know, painting events or because it doesn't have carpet. And we did also get a, a bid for the floor, but I would suggest, and the existing floor is uh, asbestos, can't be removed. So we could put a vinyl flooring over it, but we only got a uh, quote of like somewhere between $3,300 and $8,000. So I would suggest we explore that a little further, but uh, maybe if the Is it an option to paint it? Like what you use in a garage that comes with like a lifetime warranty and is super durable, is it an option to paint it and essentially encapsulate what's below, but then still have something that's durable that we can have our art classes on, you can do your Irish dancing on? Uh, we a boxy warrant. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, we discussed that. They didn't think it was actually that durable uh, versus just putting another vinyl flooring over what's there. And we could go as cheap as just cleaning the floor that's there and seeing what it looks like. Uh, I, I don't know what we want to do with the floor. Well, it sounds like to me right now, uh, since we at least have a viable bid or we want to discuss the, the painting and then the floor sounds like that's still in progress, right? So we're not in a position necessarily to like right vote on the floor anyway, right? Correct. Okay. So let's just open up for discussion um, about, so let me just clarify too. Does the, com the community center does not actually have a budget, correct? That is correct. Okay. Yeah. Um, we did well, make, dollars from the art in the park for the community center yeah. but that the doors that uh go into the courtyard right okay yeah i mean um, um i know what my thoughts are if anybody else let's definitely open it up i mean i think it's definitely money well spent the the park board is the park board but we don't have a building we need um space for all these wonderful activities whether it be summer camp or the art in the Tai Chi, I mean, just everything that we're doing to uh, reach out to the community as a whole, not just young, but old. I mean, you know, we're the park board, but there's no building for us. So essentially the community center kind of is a little home space building. And, um, you know, everybody's able to use that that room too when it's not being used for camp or whatnot. So, um, and I know it's in dire need of some fresh up. So I would, I would, my vote would be to to go ahead and spend that money and get that improvement. 
we've got the approval of Joe Jogman and that group. Uh, or do we yeah. need? Okay. They were all they were all uh, very happy if the park board would be willing to do this. Uh, you know, they just want to. You know, we told them. You know, people, we've got people willing to paint, and the the committee is not willing to just let anybody come in there and paint. Uh, you know, they want a, a job that's done professionally, and I'm <laughs> I'm not going to get involved in saying no one can do professional painting. Uh, so that's that's that was their decision the committee's decision they they would like to pick the contractor who's going to do the work i'm i'm comfortable with it given the amount of use that that room is going to get and all the work that uh, sarah's been putting in just to bring the community together i think it's money well spent in my opinion yeah and i think it could also be a room um you know i know there's sometimes inquiries from people that want to host a little gathering of family or whatnot and maybe the gym's too big or for whatever reason this just gives the community another space to have uh private or you know anything like i said public stuff or uh, just really opens up the space and freshening it up a bit you know the the whole point of the community center is for the community it's not to make money we're not we don't care if a family uses it and you know we're not trying to get them to use it to make money but it's just nice to have community people be able to use spaces that are fresh and clean and probably don't look the same way that that room has looked, even though I like it, but since I was in school there in 1978. <laughs> it wasn't a classroom when I was there, I don't think. I'm sure it wasn't. Well, yeah, I get, but it seems like hardly, you know, not many, not many places have been updated <laughs> in there. Yeah, <laughs> uh, so I would make a motion that we would, and, and this is an estimate, uh, not to go over estimate seven thousand one hundred and fifty, so it will probably be less than that. But I would make a motion that we uh, spruce up, or that we approve that bid from Michiana Construction to spruce up room thirteen at the community center. I second that. So uh, all, all in favor? Aye. Aye. I, I just have one comment. I totally agree with it, but just to go back to the flooring, Sarah has mentioned um, more than a few times just this epoxy finish. Um, I think that's what you called it, Zach and Sarah. And Joy, is there a way, Sarah, I'm not trying to give you work, but I'm trying to figure out, is there anybody, and I know you can do it, but clearly the community center committee doesn't want that, but is there anybody you know that or where we could reach out to come up with a, an estimate and you know to say that it would be a good use of that floor i'm just wondering joy oh, I know. Oh, the sorry. reason i suggested it is actually because where my girls go to daycare um her husband our daycare lady's husband is a big car guy and they redid their garage um a year or two ago with a company i think they're out of south bend and um it came with a lifetime warranty and it was guaranteed they came in they leveled out the floors um they did it's a beautiful job and and that was their concern um because you enter to and from the daycare through a garage access point and she wanted something that she could clean really well from the kids coming and going she wanted something that was safe and would last long term and that was why i suggest that because i also know her husband i mean he's got old cars, fancy cars, all kinds of stuff that he's working on those surfaces. And you would not know that that floor is a couple of years old because it cleans so well. So that was my logic is if we can get something that's like that, and I, it, it has possibility to be a little bit more money, but my logic is if we can get that done and not have to mess with it for another 30 years, I think that'd be pretty yeah. great. The epoxy okay. works. Epoxy works really well when you put it onto a a, a firm surface like concrete. Um, if you put it on anything like a tile, it has the propensity to move underneath with weight or desks or people walking around on it or whatever. Then the epoxy is not going to hold up as well. So I, I I haven't seen the floor to see how, how solid it is, but I guess the question would be to that vendor in South Bend: uh, Can you epoxy over asbestos tile, and will it be as 
long lasting as it would if you did a concrete garage. Garages work great, um, but this is. I love to. Am I allowed to call and ask those yeah. questions, or is that overstepping my boundaries? No, sure. No, absolutely. Um, yeah, we're, we're we're at the spot with the community center committee, and I think with the park board, we're just deciding what will, what will be the best thing to do with the floor. So, uh, yeah, I think we want to explore everything. So, if you could okay. get that on the yeah. box, great. Take okay. some pictures. That's the first thing I'm going to ask you is for some pictures. So, let's get get some next time you're in there. Okay, we'll do. Okay, so oh. just to keep just to keep the um anita's minute straight because i think was uh are we all all four of us in favor of the 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 proposal joy did the for seven seven thousand dollar estimate for michiana i think i heard a yay from everyone is that correct yay you yes. didn't hear one from me but yay from me i'll, I'll step away for a second okay so we have yay from from all four yeah yes. the only other i have is sarah was it room 13 you wanted a key for Yes, and Anita told me I cannot have a key for room 13. That is correct, because we don't rent that room. <laughs> so, Man, I wish we did. <laughs> um, we might get there someday. Uh, <laughs> we're, we're inching our way towards, um, but right now I can't get you a key. Even if we're paying all this money to fix it up? Well, maybe you can sweet talk Joe. <laughs> <laughs> I'll try, Sarah. Yes. I appreciate that. All right. Yeah. Tell them tell them the seven thousand uh, dollar paint can has a has, needs a key. If you can't open the paint can without a key and it's a specific key. <laughs> it's a key that only works room thirteen. Yes. <laughs> open the paint can. <laughs> okay. Right. I'll be there if you need any backup, Anita. <laughs> yeah, I probably will. All right. Thanks. It's all. good it's good that he loves it as much as he does though. Yes. Yeah. Um all right, Sarah, is there anything else? No, do you guys have any questions for me? No, just thank you again for, for all your great work. Oh, it's been a joy. It's super fun. Great. Um, I'm moving on then to old business. I still have not heard back from Mark about the what kind of sign he wanted at 24, which is odd. So now I'm thinking maybe he did not get my email, so I'll call him tomorrow because I've emailed him two or three times, and he usually responds immediately. Um, I gave him some suggestions of where I thought the stop should, the sign could go. Uh, just wanted his clarification on what do you want the sign to say. Obviously, it's all within our ordinances. It won't be bigger than it's allowed. And I think we, you know, have all talked about we want it as, as small as possible to not be, you know, obtrusive, but we also need it to be uh, so visible for, for cars and, and whatnot. So there'll be a balance there. But um, I didn't get any feedback from him whatsoever, and it is kind of his his project, so that's still still out there. So I apologize for that because that hasn't moved along. Um, moving on, then I think to new business, um, this is new twenty twenty two, new year. So um, I think I'd like to make a, mo a motion to appoint a new president of Zach Neff. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Congratulations, Zach. <laughs> Way to go, Zach. You're muted. <laughs> you sound thrilled so far, Zach. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> I just didn't know if I get a vote or not. But no, I appreciate the uh, the confidence. I It's not going to change anything as far as how we work. So it's just, just an, a, another person starting the meetings. That's going to be all that is for now. But uh, thank you. Happy to yep. do it. Thank you. Uh, now on to uh, the good stuff about uh, uh, budgets. If we want to just budget or recap of where we were, which is in good shape for 2021 and just have any discussions going forward. Um, Joy, I'll let you kind of lead that since you're our, our budget person. Okay, for 2021, we ended up in good shape. Uh, I think we ended up with like $24,000 left. And that's because Bill did not take the entire amount we offered up for Woodruff, for the Woodruff bill. So uh, we were 15% under budget. What happens to that money, Joy? Um, it goes back into the park fund, but okay. uh, oh, it'll be there for later use, but it's not like it goes into our budget this year as right. extra. Okay. Okay. 
So for this year, like for example, we budgeted $10,000 to finish stop 23. Uh, I don't know what the split's going to be with Woodruff, but I think it'll be more than that. Yeah, I think it really the town uh, has been stepping in to pay for most of the Woodruff bills. So we'll see how they feel about that. Uh, stop, you know, we only budgeted this year $5,000 for the sign and stop 24, but we didn't budget anything for stop 24 for, you know, aren't we supposed to do plantings and all kinds of stuff there? Yeah, yeah. Um, and yeah, we should probably up that because that had all been just kind of in limbo with it not being, you know, hadn't really been done and we didn't finish it till Janice and I went out and looked at that this year and we did um, do a great, well, we, Janice and I didn't, but our, the people we talked to did an amazing job of clearing it. We did make a lot of progress with our plans moving forward, but they cleaned, you know, they just did a lot of clearing. So there was labor costs um, for that, but not, not any other plant plantings and um really 24 ongoing the cost is going to be labor once um once um janice and the people that know something uh we can come up with viable plants that uh, you know are going to be whatever deer resistant or, or whatever native to the area once those are planted it's it's um you know maybe there'll be some perennials here and there that we decide to do but it's not going to be but we're going to have to probably increase the um the gardeners or landscaping budget, whatever the technical term is, to, to have that, it's gonna need a lot more attention than it ever has. Cause we didn't get that cleared out what Janice, it was that hot day, but it was like August or something. Yeah, and we need oh. to get it all the way down to the, to the revetment as well. Um, there's a lot of work down there by the revetment. Janice, you're still muted. Yes, it was the end of August, early September, and, the, yeah. and um, then we had met, it was too late to plant or even talk about getting plants at that point. So yeah. we'll be able to start that this uh, coming season. Yeah. And just so you know, um, Janice and everybody else, whenever we start to buy some plants for that stop, um, Ely's has an arrangement with a... Um, a greenhouse that's in St. Charles, Illinois. And basically, if he, this isn't just any, it's not just me as anybody, but if he's, if Dan's doing your property, he's doing your landscaping, um, he charges for labor to plant things, but he doesn't charge anything for the plants themselves. You buy them directly from this retailer. And it's a, like half the price what you pay for plants at a Home Depot or someplace like that. So, um, if you're not aware of that, you could definitely do that. And, and is, if, we're, if we're still working with Dan or Healy's um, for the stop work this year, he wouldn't mind us doing that over to him. That's great. I think I know the business that's in St. Charles since I shopped there. <laughs> yep. I bought a lot of stuff from them the last couple of years. I, so, yeah, it's, it, it's a good place. I do have a question, Kendra, about uh, we had a discussion about who would do the maintenance and the person that we had recommended is uncomfortable with doing that. So do I need to go back and get a bid or anything or just what's the well, I think the easiest thing would be, I mean, sure. If you know other people, absolutely. The more that's always been the challenge. These landscapers have been impossible to nail down. We've, we have some relationships with, you know, some good ones, but, um, and they were so hard to find with COVID and everything. It was like, you couldn't find, you couldn't pay a landscaper to save your life the past couple of years. So yeah, if there's anyone else and I'll double check with Healy to see if he even has the manpower to do it. Cause he was, um, you know, the reason we needed a second crew was because right. Healy was stretched too thin. So absolutely. If you know any people that you think would be willing, um, to do it, that'd be that'd be wonderful, and I'll I'll, I'll check with him and see if, if he has the bandwidth and the manpower okay. to um, even take that on. Great, he was bidding on our home project here and had the bandwidth for that, but I didn't ask him about maintenance. So okay, you know, which is a bigger thing. So, all right, so you'll contact Healy, get back yep. with me, and then we'll go from there. Okay, yeah, perfect. Yep. Thank you very much. Yeah, Kendra, thank the, you. Other th the other thing we could do there, Kendra, and I don't think Dan would mind. He's going to be so busy in the spring, but we could split the work up. The stops are numbered. He was, we he was dropped, stops. 
we tried. We couldn't find anybody to do it. The one guy we found, he, uh, it's a whole story. He ended up clearing that whole thing for free. He wouldn't charge, he wouldn't charge us. He, it's a whole, I don't even, he ended up doing the work for free. So, and that was, um, nobody else has wanted the jobs. They can't even find them. They, you know, like the dance landscapers of the world and whatever, make so much money on the houses, the, the maintenance, the every weekly maintenance, whatever to do our work there, nobody wanted it. So Janice and I were dying last year. We finally found this guy and, uh, he did a great job and never wanted to be paid for it. We didn't have, end up having to pay him and he doesn't want to continue doing it. He feels he is stepping on Dan Healy's toes and taking his money, even though Dan said, you're not, I need help. And he just still doesn't want to get involved. It's odd. So we, we I'd be more than happy to have several contractors if they need to um, do it. I'm going to kind of start with Dan and what his bandwidth is. And, and um, I think we just, yeah, keep sending me any names you guys have or come across people and I'll reach out to them. I've walked the stop several times with many contractors and said, Here's what each stop needs. And some of them never call back ever again. <laughs> so mm -hmm. last I hear from them. And we have all that documentation too from the grant. So it's it's all laid out on what needs to be done. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so we're gonna need to reallocate anyway some money for, for this year to stop twenty-four. Uh and Zach said maybe a little for stop more for stop 23. We budgeted $25,000 this year for stop 28 uh, with an additional 15,000 to finish up next year in 2023. Uh, I don't know if that's going to work out that way or not. And we didn't budget anything for stop 29 this year. What we did do was we budgeted $35,000 this year for an ADA walkway in the park with five new benches and three restored benches. And I'm thinking maybe we, uh, for our walkway in the park, maybe this year we just get, uh, you know, uh, Jeff Oldman's from um, Globo or another landscape architect to maybe draw us up a plan so we know exactly what we're talking about and looking at. And uh, then some of that, other, the rest of that other 35,000 we can use to reallocate to other areas. Now, a lot of this is gonna depend, Joy, too, on what the town does with 23. If the town picks up 23 as part of that, that overall project with the Burdettman and the, the new walls, then that will change our situation. Yeah. You know? uh, yeah, so, um, I don't know how you guys feel about that, but um, I think we shouldn't start a big project like the walkway in the park until we finish up the stops. Yeah. In my For sure. Especially 28 has been pushed back for two, three years because of the erosion that happened everywhere else. So those people have been very involved and we all work with them. And yeah, yeah I agree. Patient too, we've been talking of years with them so you guys yeah. are comfortable with that i'm going to start getting quotes on 28 as soon as i can get like, somebody to look at it and try to get somebody nailed down for the first project of the year as they start getting piled up with people so we'll start okay. looking at it now when there's snow on the ground yeah i know, I know woodruff, woodruff wants to do it um but we do need to get some bids if we can yeah uh woodruff's great but you know since they use such massive equipment they're so expensive yep they do, they do a great job though, but yeah, you're right. Yeah, for sure. Uh, that's all I have for the budget. I mean, we have $75,000 this year for improvements. So those were the things I just listed. Um, Sarah, none of your budget things changed. They're, they're all the same. Uh, I told Janice what their balance is in, uh, for the garden club we did add five thousand dollar slot this year for park sponsored events so for our art in the park uh which we may want to get going on soon because last year we were way too late um and we upped our printing and advertising from two thousand to five thousand for this year okay that all sounds good yeah um, 
they have a date yet or for anything art in the park? That was the lat latter part of the summer, if I'm not mistaken, right? Yeah, I think we need to do it before we did it this year because everybody was gone. You know, like Belly Flop was already closed. Yeah. I think we need to do it like maybe at the end of uh, the park program before everybody's gone or I don't, I don't know what you guys think. Everybody was really popular. Everybody wants us to have it again. And it's now become a park board event. So Sue's not going to have anything to do with it anymore. Oh, uh, that was good. Yes. So, uh, I know Janice knows a lot of artists. Um, and she kind of worked with Sue on this thing, but, uh, the, the garden clubs thing with the kids was a, a big hit, you know, and they want to see that again this year. So <clears throat> I don't know. Do we want to get a little planning committee together or how do we want to handle this? Let me talk about the, the timing. One of the things that we heard was that it would be great to have it while summer camp was going on because the kids would really enjoy coming to some of the events during the arts in the park that brings the adults. And so whenever summer camp is, that's a great time to have a art event. Okay. Um, I, I think a small committee would be good. Um, two or three people doesn't have to be board members, whatever, but, but if we don't have some commitment from some folks that want to put that on, it's just going to keep getting moved in the next meeting. Yeah, I'll participate because I can then communicate with the community center people. Uh, who else wants the committee? Yeah, I'll help you, Joy. Okay. And I'll oh. focus on 28 then and getting 21 and 23 finished up. All right, I'm available if you need anything. <laughs> and okay. Joy, I'll help out from the Beach Garden Club side for the okay. kids' activities for Art in the Park. Great. There will probably be someone else too that will want to join. I'll put the feelers out. Okay. So, well, I don't know. I'm just on escalator. I don't understand why it was such a great event and it was their idea, but now they don't want to do it anymore. Was there a well, reason? The one that was in charge of it was Sue Keenan, and she has quit the community center committee. And uh, she was only willing to do it last year to try it out to her only point was trying to make money for the new doors for the courtyard at the community center. Gotcha. But it became, it, it was really popular and everybody uh, asked if it could be a park board event. So. Hoping gotcha. it. Great. Okay. We charged the people, the, the artists like 50 bucks to set up, and then that money, well, this year went to the community center doors. Uh, you know, it can go towards one thing or just whatever we want. Yeah, okay. Great. Um, that might be it. Anybody else have anything to discuss before we open up for a public comment? Not me. Okay. Not me. Okay. Um, if... Um, anyone who's on has public or yeah has a public comment. I think you just unmute yourself or Zach will unmute you and we'll wait a few minutes. I think it's just two, maybe three the most. One being John. So I guess uh, I guess we're good going once, going twice. Okay. Move to adjourn. Um, I'm sorry, Joy, what? Move to adjourn. Yep. Um, I second that. Okay. Hi. Bye. Good night. Bye. Goodbye. Bye. Thanks, guys. Bye.